All right, good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to get everyone seated, we can get started. Welcome to your Public Works and Gang Reduction Committee. I'm joined by my colleagues, Council Members Rue, Buscaino, Martinez, and O'Farrell. Um, let's, uh, let's get this meeting rolling. Let's start with uh, public comment. We have one uh, general public comment speaker, uh, so why don't we bring that up, uh, bring him up. Mr. Herman, why don't you come up and you can take your, uh, your multiple speaker items and then your general comments, so you get two minutes. First minute is for the items, the second minute is for uh, general comments. Zavatsa, Zavatsa. Why Archbishop Bean Square? It's well beyond belief that the strain in the Archbishop, fuck Bean Square, give us our rights. Send the Jew, Carl Bean, back to fucking Israel. We do not want intersection off a of sycamore because I'm sick more of the fucking Catholic Church fucking young children, especially gay men, Mr. O'Farrell. Fucking gay men that God hates sinners. God hates you, Archbishop Carl Bean Square, for taking the bribery of these white fucking nigger politicians. Now my general public comment. Keep, keep to the topic. U.S. 395-444, Brandenburg versus Ohio, Mr. Ted Jordan for the record. How far is the end going to, yeah? This is a dirty niggas. Send the Jew back to uh, Israel you, or you to, to fucking Sycamore uh, Avenue. To the Save Israel. the fucking trees. Save all the fucking trees from being cut down in LA. Why not? We must stop pruning trees and save like trees the, for the religious yelling, purpose so no that yelling. we send the fucking Jews back to Israel. Let's give them back to the dark garden. There's no yelling. There's no yelling. You can speak, you can use your last 10 seconds if you keep your voice at a regular level. 42 USC 1983, fuck the Archbishop and fuck you, you black fucking asshole Jew. Okay. Um, Mr. Mr. Chair, I'd just like to say that is officially a disruption of this meeting. Thank you. What we just witnessed from Mr. Herman is a disruption of this committee hearing. It, it, it certainly is a disgusting display that we have seen time and time again. Um, let's, let's move now, colleagues, to get through this uh, agenda. We've, um, unless there's an objection from my colleagues, I'd like to move items four and five on consent. Seeing no objection, that will be the order. Um, colleagues, before we take up the rest of our items, I want to first say uh, my intention when I put this agenda for this meeting today was to make it a very tree-centric meeting. Most of you know that uh, since I've become chair of this committee, my goal has been to revitalize our urban forestry division so that we can get back to where we were at pre-recession levels in terms of resources and staffing. It's crazy to me that we're still uh, only at a fraction of what we were back before the recession to get us to be proactive in sustaining and creating a healthy urban tree canopy, including conducting a thorough tree inventory, to be proactive in terms of our tree trimming, dead tree removal, and pruning involving sidewalk repair, and to bring more targeted local hires to the city and stop contracting out our work. I know these are goals that we all share. Mr. Rue and I have done a number of motions together on, on some of these topics with the trees, and every year in the budget we want to move uh, to get us to a healthy level in terms of our trees so we can eliminate the safety hazards, we can stop being penny wise and pound foolish, uh, and we can really uh, have a healthy urban uh, canopy. So with that, I wanted to uh, move to item number one. If you would, Mr. Espinosa, if you would read item one into the record, please. Item number one is the Bureau of Street Services report relative to urban trees. Great, and I think we're gonna start with our, our uh, Board of Public Works president, Mr. Kevin James on this item. Mr. Thank president, you, Mr. Chair. welcome. Surprise. Um, I, I really just, uh, first of all, thank you for the time to all of you. I really wanted to take just a couple of minutes to 
um, uh, to thank you and to let you know um, uh, a little bit about what we at the Board of Public Works have really had kind of the unique privilege to do um, uh, at the board regarding trees um, and our urban canopy. First of all, um, in the last couple of years, uh, with your leadership, Mr. Chair, and, and your colleagues um, on the Public Works uh, Committee, as well as the Budget and Finance Committee, we really appreciate your partnership with the mayor in re restoring um, the Urban Forestry Division to its point prior to uh, the recession. I know that we're starting to get there, and uh, that's obviously very important to all of you um, and, and your, con your constituents as well. I, I want to um, just to thank you for all of that. Also, the, uh, the attention that you have uh, given to, uh, to our urban forest um, in the past few years have really helped us get to the point where um, I feel safe calling 2019 the year of the tree, and I also think that we are uh, turning a corner with uh, the Bureau of Street Services and our urban forestry uh, division. Uh, just a couple of specific items. Um, Mr. Chair, thank you, your partnership with the Comptroller's Office um, uh, in the rollout of the audit that we're going to hear a bit about. Thank you for your leadership there. And we've, uh, we've had some creativity that I think has been uh, successful with communities. In particular, I can think of one in Council District 4, Councilman Rue on Cherokee, with um, what our Bureau of Street Services was able to do with, with your office. Um, you know, the board is, uh, the Board of Public Works is a really unique a unique place for for our residents. We have the luxury of being able to have, if necessary, uh, sometimes an hour or two hour hearings regarding tree removals. These are never uh, easy decisions for our city, for our Board of Public Works. Um, and because of that, we um, uh, I, I think we were the first board uh, to uh, install CEQA notice requirements around tree removals. They were legally required but had previously not been part of the board's process. Um, our Board of Public Works worked with leadership in the environmental community as well as the environmental bar. Um, we worked with the city attorney's office um, in implementing what has been CEQA notice that um, also has prevented uh, various forms of litigation for the city uh, around tree removals as well. We always walk into our board hearings with the goal of saving trees. Some of the lawyers that we've dealt with from the environmental bar are now keeping track in their own practice with their own um, advocacy materials, if you will, of the number of trees that they've been able to save with us through their advocacy before the Board of Public Works, and we're into the hundreds. Um, we also have instituted uh, a required tree planting. We were very frustrated with the nursery that existed that Street Service previously had where we sent trees uh, that were uh, unable to be planted. One of the things that we've done uh, even before we ended up with the ordinance process at the city level, um, we now mandate, even if our uh, street services or uh, others that are planting trees as a result of the two to one or four to one replacement, we no longer allow them to come to the nursery unless it's, uh, there is no other place in the adjacent area to replant trees. So our replanting numbers are, are significant. I think our, our percentage would be well above 95%. We've had a number of what I would call mini mediations where we have two entities. Oftentimes it's a developer versus a community group or a, even a neighborhood council organization um, or a homeowners association. And we've been able to, through uh, uh, through a number of sometimes long and detailed hearings at the Board of Public Works, we've been able to result, uh, to end with a result of, uh, for lack of a better term, a settlement agreement, uh, a resolution of the tree removal issues to keep those matters out of the City Council and out of the courts. Um, and finally, our Board has not been afraid when necessary uh, to implement uh, what some would characterize as very extreme penalties that were recommended by the Bureau of Street Services for what we've seen as illegal tree removals in various parts of the city. I know that these are all issues that you all are going to be dealing with going forward, but I did want to provide just a few minutes of a foundation uh, so that you know of what we're working with um, whenever we have the tree removal hearings that are always uh, our most emotional hearings um, and some of our most dis difficult hearings that do come before the board. So thank you, Mr. Chair, for the time.
Great. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you for all the great work you're doing at the board. I think we'll have uh, Greg Spots or Adele, are you coming up as well? Or from BSS, whoever, <laughs> however you want to do it. I think we, Streets, Streets LA now, as we are re, re, being rebranded at Streets LA, and in the middle of our name is a tree, uh, because tree is part of the infrastructure and part of what we do, and uh, it's an integral part. You know, we have streets, sidewalks, and also climate adaptation, and, and because trees are part of keeping the city cool, uh, 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 addressing uh, stormwater capture, uh, providing a safe place to walk, uh, and connect people uh, and I'm very proud of the teamwork and the, the relationship we have so thank you for the partnership uh, with each one of you uh, at, at committee here and for the board for the support but also the staff that we have uh, a, f a couple of months ago we, we actually celebrated hiring uh, the first 23 surgeons and uh, and we had them in the training facility in, in the chairman's uh, uh, council district in the valley we did that we went out and visited some locations uh, uh, two weekends ago we were with uh, Councilwoman Nuri Martinez in her district in Van Nuys, planting trees uh, as with, the, with, the, with the partners in the community to cool uh, the streets in, in the neighborhood. As we know, uh, by 2040, 2060, uh, you know, days with 95 degrees in Los Angeles probably will triple. And what we need to do is, is provide what we need to do now to address the climate change and provide a way to cool it through trees, through cool pavement, uh, through uh, shelters for transit shelters, and many, many things we're trying to do. So this is a, trees are part of a, a, a big solution, how we're gonna mitigate the future. But I'm proud of the workers that we have, I'm proud of what we've done. You know, saving trees is a, is a new discussion we're having in our, our department. We had a discussion in your committee as I came in. Uh, to my new role and we were able to successfully save trees in Councilman Roo's district on Cherokee and, and worked with the community and met with them and we were able to even build a meandering sidewalk that saves trees and, and, and it's, the discussion is changing, the dialogue is changing. I'm talking to uh, you know, Councilman O'Farrell in his district, what we need to do with tree trimming and how we save trees. The same thing in communities like Watts or, or, or uh, San Pedro with, with Councilman Biscay, you know, how we can do that. And I wanna make sure that it's balanced between uh, improving our sidewalks and also saving trees. I think there's a balance we can do that. Uh, we have a, a potential of a, a tree summit coming up uh, hopefully uh, Arbor Day, around Arbor Day in April. Uh, we invite you all to come to it and be part of that dialogue and policy discussion, engagement of what we need to do to move us forward. Uh, but I want to thank you, first of all, for what you've done last budget, uh, especially uh, the, the committee here, the budget committee and council and the mayor by allowing us to have staff finally to do what we need to do in trimming and hiring the people, but more needs to be done. And, and the process is continuing. I just met with Wendy, uh, uh, um, the, the general manager of personnel right now, and we talked about moving the needle in hiring. Uh, finally, we have a plus 120 new bodies in Streets LA since October, which is a good thing. We're moving in the right direction. More to be done, but I want to thank you. And I have a great team here, Greg Spots and, and Tim Tyson and their team. They've been doing a great job, and I want to continue working with you uh, as we move forward to making this city a, a safe and sustainable city. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. You, you're, we really appreciate the hard work and the great work that you're doing as, as the GM, and, and you're right, you have a great team as well, which We'll now hear from one of those members, Mr. Spots. Thank you, um, and thank you to uh, Board President and uh, to my boss, Adele. Uh, I'm Greg Spots, Assistant Director of the Bureau of Street Services and also our Chief Sustainability Officer. And today we're focused on four different motions that were made during the 17, or the 1819 budget process. So we're here to bring those forward uh, so those are completed before the next budget process gets underway. One of them pertains to the nursery, and that's a separate item we'll hear later in the meeting. But the other three, um, S84, S85, and S86, we reported back uh, with one unified report because all three of these questions and motions pertain to the strategic development of how we're managing the street trees in LA. It's an exciting time for that. Um, we are staffing up in our field tree maintenance uh, program. 
and simultaneously we are pursuing some of the strategic initiatives like a tree inventory and work management system that we need to modernize uh, the way we're managing these resources. In 2015, uh, the, the Streets LA published our first ever State of the Street Trees report. We had published State of the Streets reports about the road surface every three years, but we had never done one about the trees. And that report said that we needed an updated cloud-based tree inventory, and we also needed more city forces to do tree trimming, dead tree removals, tree planting, tree watering, and root pruning so that the trees could coexist with the sidewalk. And I'm very pleased to tell you that, you know, through the leadership of uh, people on this committee and the budget committee, uh, 55 positions were approved in this current year's budget. We've hired most of those people. And today I have four tree trimming crews working. That's the most, that's, that's been working with city crews trimming trees proactively for at least 12 years. So that's a very exciting thing. And there's one more coming on uh, as we hire a few more people. Um, so we're going to be trimming, we're going to get to the point later this fiscal where we're trimming almost a thousand trees a week. That's a very, very exciting time for us. And we're removing dead trees along those grids for you in your council districts. So instead of hiring a contractor to trim the trees but leave the dead ones behind, we're bringing all of the street tree infrastructure into a state of good repair before we leave the block that day. And I think that's a much better service for the constituents. Um, our state of the street trees report in 2015 parallels the recommendations in the DUDEC consultant report for city plants that came out in December, the roadmap towards an urban forestry management plan, and parallels the recommendation in the recent controller's report that will be discussed in the next agenda item. All of those said that we need an updated uh, cloud-based inventory with a public-facing map of all the 700,000 street trees in the city. And we are now pursuing that by way uh, of trying to get a CAL FIRE grant. For that, we are modeling our efforts on Rec and Parks. They are in their second grant with CAL FIRE um, to inventory the trees that are in our city parks. And we are aligning with them around the same software product uh, so that we could house more and more of this information in the same place. And they've had very good several years experience with uh, that uh, that product that also does work management. You can dispatch crews and assign them work on particular trees within this software. So uh, we just submitted our second round application last week for that grant and we're told when you get to that second round you have a 50% chance of getting the grant. So fingers crossed uh, on that. Um, also, um, we are hiring tree planting and watering crews as part of those 55 new positions. Um, we will be planting trees for the city's capital projects. We will be planting trees uh, for urban cooling purposes. We'll be planting trees that are the second replacement tree for the sidewalk program with that staff. And we actually will be hoping to augment that staff in the coming budget cycle because there are so many uh, city projects right now that involve planting trees. and. Um, the other departments that are managing those projects have asked us if we can put together the people to water them. Um, also, uh, the city is pursuing uh, a citywide tree policy leadership position in the office of the Board of Public Works. Um, our department isn't involved in hiring that position, but we very much look forward to working closely with that person when appointed because there's so many matters where the urban forest has some private property elements, some park elements, some street tree elements, and this new person uh, will um, be able to coordinate and shape uh, those efforts and align those efforts with the excellent recommendations in the DUDEC report around pursuing an urban forest management plan. And finally, we attach to this report a previous report from October 2018, which is responsive to the question on uh, strengthening penalties for um, violations on street trees. And I'm ready to uh, answer any questions you have on these items. Great, thank you. Um, appreciate the report and uh, you mentioned the, the CAL FIRE grant, which I was 
excited about, although 50-50 is only a toss of a coin, so I was hoping it would be higher. But um, what portion, uh, if, we, if there is a Cal, Fran, Cal Fire grant, uh, what portion of the inventory would that cover? The Cal Fire grant would cover the establishment of the software program and a arborist-led inventory of 40% of the 700,000 street trees. You have to pay arborists about $3 a tree to have them inventory your street tree population, and this would be a million dollar grant with several hundred thousand in matching staff time by us. So it would get us about 40% of the way there. So what, what's the total, so a million dollars gets 40%, is it a direct number for the full cost of the inventory? The full cost of inventorying all the trees would be about 2.1 million. 2.1, so it would, get us, it would get us that much. And how the, we would have to make up the rest of it, right, as a city, and, and how, um, if we wanted to move forward with this, would we do it in one year, two years, what would you be looking at if we wanted to? Um... I think the, f the best way to do it would be to have the city come in with additional resources quickly so that we could get a whole thing inventoried in one couple year period and then have a snapshot of the condition of all 700,000 street trees. Reckon Parks did it differently. They got an initial grant, inventoried some of the trees, came back a few years later and pursued a second grant, which will now complete their inventory. Um, but I think it would be well worth considering uh, having some city resources come in uh, 1920 uh, to be able to uh, finish off or further advance the inventory process. And can, can we develop the urban uh, forest management plan while conducting the inventory, or do we actually have to conduct the inventory first? We can pursue in, in parallel some of the deliverables, some of the many deliverables of the urban forest management plan, but the inventory is a necessary predicate to some of the strategic decisions around how you're going to manage the resource once you've, you know, thoroughly identified uh, the, all the trees and the condition they're in and the age and the species then you can do some analytics to help you make decisions about your priorities strategically. Okay. And if the, if the coin comes up on the wrong side and we don't get this CAL FIRE grant, um, what's the plan to, do, to uh, move forward with getting the inventory? I think we'd have to come uh, with a budget request uh, to help get us started. Okay. And are there components of the, the urban forestry management plan that the Bureau is, is not moving forward or what are the components that we are moving forward? There's a large number of recommendations in the DUDEC report. Uh, not all of them pertain to the street tree population. Some of them have to do with private property trees. Some of them have to do with uh, trees in parks, trees on other city properties. So we are prioritizing those recommendations that um, pertain to the street tree population. And as we move forward, we'll be reporting on progress on different deliverables. And I think that when that citywide tree policy leader is appointed, one of that person's main roles will be to try to sequence those deliverables in the most strategic manner. A question for uh, Public Works, but while you're up here, what, let me open it up to my colleagues. Um, Mr. Roof. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you for um, thoughtfully putting this meeting together. Um, this is, um, as you put it, this is the tree meeting, and. Um, and we worked many times on this issue, and, and if I said it once, I've said it twice, our urban canopy must be protected and properly maintained. And the benefits of, the, of a rich and diverse canopy provide, uh, what a rich and diverse canopy provides is immeasurable. And you know, I really wanna thank the Bureau of Street Services for, for these reports, as well as the controller, um, which we're gonna talk about shortly, on the analysis of the city's tree, uh, tree trimming and maintenance program. But I gotta say um, that these reports, in particular the controller's report, remarkably look similar to the raise that ra to the issues that we raised. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that, the, that the chair and I, we uh, co-authored. And I would encourage that the Budget and Finance Committee move on those um, uh, motions along to the council so we could get to work. Uh, but I'm really happy to see that additional conversations about the city's trees are being taken up. And I'm confident that while progress has been slow, we are on the right path. Um, but I do have a couple of questions. Um, you mentioned the urban forest coordinator, which I'm very excited about. So uh, you're in process, but where is it at right now? Is it at? 
It's actually um, a question we should address to the board office because the, they, they control the position and they're actually in the hiring process, but it was advertised in December and then the uh, period was extended to get some additional candidates. So it's still open and candidates are, there are candidates identified? I think there may be a recruitment effort going on to bring some really qualified uh, candidates. Fernando Campos, Executive Officer with the Board of Public Works. We have been trying to recruit for this position since October of 2018. We've gone through two recruiting cycles. The first cycle was in, back in October of 2018, in which we used the civil service system to attract candidates. That system or that process only resulted in three candidates, of which those three candidates, neither, none of the candidates uh, submitted their application or responses to our questions that we had related to the position. So therefore, we asked, in working with collaboration with the CAO's office, we asked for a sub authority to go out and recruit outside the city civil service system. That process resulted in about 10 applicants for the, uh, in, the, in the process. However, half of those applicants were within the city, the other half were outside the city, one of those being a retired ex-employee, retired employee uh, that, is no that is not eligible to apply for the position. So therefore, we are now working with the personnel department to create a new classification for a citywide force officer position. That position is slated to go before the Civil Service Commission on April 11th of this year uh, in a couple of weeks. In addition to that, we did release the posting for a new job recruitment bulletin. The due date for those um, applicants to submit their applications is April 19th. So within 30 days. The goal is to have this position filled before the end of the fiscal year. Wow. Um, I'm glad it's moving along. I mean, it's taking forever, but I'm glad it's moving along. And I know it's not your fault. It's our process. Recruiting and, for three positions. Right. I know. And this is a problem that we're having all throughout all the different departments. But I, I am um, happy to hear that there is a lot for attraction. Um, I had another question uh, about the CAL FIRE grant. Um, so does this fire, CAL FIRE grant you guys are talking about, um, uh, will it cover software? Yes. Cost of software? Yes. And, and regarding that software, is that something, um, I know there was, there's been discussions with uh, Recreation and Parks Department. Are you guys looking at the same software so you guys could work, work together and, and in conjunction or? Yes, our, our grant application uh, uh, proposes adopting the same software, Davy TreeKeeper, that Reckon Parks is already using, and we've spent hours with them seeing how they use it, and we uh, really like the way it works for them. We think putting more and more of the city's trees under the same database makes sense, and it's really the largest company uh, that's a provider in this space, and so I think it's the most reliable long-term company to go with. So whether you use that same software or if you don't, I'm sure you're going to be trying to make sure that the platforms are able to communicate with each other, right? Oh, we intend to use the same oh, software. great. That's our goal. Okay. Um, question about uh, tree trimming and dead tree removal. Um, I'm excited that we're adding, that you're going to, you already have four new uh, trimming, crews, trimming crews and one additional dead tree removal crew. Um, so what would that provide for us? How much more additional proactive time uh, trimming and non-emergency work can we expect to get done? So our goal for this fiscal year, uh, a time when these positions were coming on in the mid-year, is to trim proactively with city forces a total of 25,000 trees and remove around 1,400 dead trees. And we can amp that up a little bit more next fiscal when we have the full run rate of that staff. What was that compared to last year? Well, we were contracting out quite a lot of tree trimming, so the numbers haven't changed that much, but the modality is different. But the dead tree removals, you know, three years ago, we only were doing dead tree removals on an emergency basis. Mm -hmm. And then we got one dead tree removal crew, and that crew was doing about 900 trees a year. And now that we have a second one coming on halfway through the year, that gets us another 400, 500 trees. Next year, we should be up to almost 2,000 dead trees removed every year proactively. So where are we on um, getting our city's trimming cycle uh, down to the International Society of Ar 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 Arbicultural recommendations of a five-year trimming cycle? Well, that's the epic challenge. There's 700,000 street trees, and if the best practice is five to seven years, even at a seven-year cycle, we'd have to trim 100,000 street trees every year, and this year we're going to trim 25,000. So we're still quite a ways from having the type of trim cycle that would be ideal. I think the, the what we're heading is, is to get to a, a cycle of, of trimming that's proactive 
but I think what we need is the comprehensive urban management plan. The plan that needs to be done is not every tree has to be done every five years, not every tree has to be done. So I think we have to have a plan and have a schedule and have, you know, and, and, and the way it's gonna be the urban management plan is gonna have three components. One is planning, where are we gonna, what's condition, what are we gonna do, what's the frequency, and what trees have to be done. You'll have a schedule for, and, and come up with resources that needs to be done. And what are you gonna plant based on the corridors and the areas that have to be done. Then a frequency of planting, one, to make up and increase the canopy, but also to make up for the trees that are dying, the trees will die. Mm -hmm. So how we make up that and have a, a, a plan. And the last component is preserving trees. And the preserving trees is how we're gonna make sure the trees are taken care of and trimmed, nourished, etc. And that's gonna be a process. We're looking also at a partnership with the community to provide us feedback on what the condition of the tree is. Uh, and I've talked to Greg and I, and, and we've been working on technologies and tools to expedite the inventory using working with Google and other technologies to help us avoid having people to go in person. So we're doing a lot of work and hard work ourselves trying to figure out how we can expedite the inventory and building on what we have already. We had a database of trees going back to a few years ago. Uh, I think 2007, roughly, uh, we had a inventory. The majority of it's still there, so we're gonna build on what we have. We're not gonna just throw that away. And then use technology, uh, you know, using Google Maps and others and imagery and technology, artificial intelligence to help us capture data and put it in. Then enlist community members to help us feed the information in also. So, so it's gonna be working with you and how we, we do this. This is a start, but eventually we're gonna come up with a budget and a plan and resources and gradually grow into a system that we have a proactive uh, care and management of our urban forest. Thank you. Mr. O'Farrell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm gonna have one question here and then a few more questions once we hear the controller's report. Uh, in relation to the tree management system that Recreation and Parks has in place, can you, you, you talked about that a little bit, Greg, but can you elaborate on uh, what might be best practices or ideas or a sharing of, um, of those practices or borrowing ideas and exchanging in between the two? Uh, at the end of the day, the general public just cares about trees, whether it's the parkway or literally a park, so uh, what might opportunities for maximizing resources for the better health and well-being of our trees and our urban canopy. Sure. Ways. We've learned a lot from working very closely with the lead forester at um, Reckon Parks. Um, we've uh, taken meetings with a number of vendors, but we actually really like the approach Reckon Parks is using with the Davy Tree Keeper product. What we really like about it is the product isn't just an inventory, it's also a work order management system. So you can select some trees and say, these trees need this type of intervention, and you can schedule that intervention, and then your field crew with a smartphone or a tablet can report on what they did back to the work management system. And are you all incorporating some of that already, or is it something that you're deliberating on? We intend to buy that system with the grant, if we can get the grant, and start using it. But populating that inventory um, to really have an accurate uh, idea of the health and size and current age of each tree, we really do need to eyeball each one with a professional arborist, and that's where most of the cost comes in. Thank you, Mr. Buscaino. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your presentation. I have um, just a couple questions. Um, Mr. Chair, you mentioned the CAL FIRE grant. I um, appreciate the um, explanation on um, what that means. And my question is, how soon will we get the results? Where you mean at? how soon will we find out if yeah. we get the grant? I think within the next 90 days, because they want to push the money out. So hopefully before the end of the fiscal year. Um, and as far as these uh, ongoing reports, uh, it seems that, you know, these pervasive, the theme across these reports is that we need to conduct a tree inventory study. Would you agree? 
Yes, we need to get to a urban forest management plan for the whole forest, not just the street trees. And in order to do so, we need an inventory of each of the components of that forest. Now, it isn't so easy to do an inventory of the private property trees. But we want to get to a point where all the city-controlled trees are have a current inventory. Rec and Parks is well on their way. We want to follow with the street tree population. And then as a city, we're going to have to look at all the trees that are on city properties that are not parks. So I, that's another I get tree frustrated population. with studies. I can tell you I don't need a report in, in my district. I'm one of the most polluted neighborhoods with the lowest tree canopy, which is a shame. Um, so what I don't see a lot of information on these reports is how the study can be, would be conducted. And Let's say we're able to find uh, funds to fully cover that study. How would we develop a plan to conduct that study to the best of our abilities? When you say study, do you mean the inventory? Yes. So um, there are companies that uh, will put contract arborists out in the field to populate a cloud-based inventory of all the trees, and that's how Rec and Parks did it, and we're modeling what we're doing on how they did theirs. They're a portion of the way through. Um, it isn't un, like some sort of arbitrary abstract study. It's an actual species, height, diameter, condition, age of every one of the 700,000 street trees. And with that information, we can then develop strategic maintenance plans for the tree population. But that's not stopping us from maintaining what we have now. And, you know, uh, the council provided us with new tree planting and watering crews this year, and we're going to be planting trees in your district, and we're not waiting for the tree inventory to add to the tree canopy. Appreciate that, but how would we ensure that this isn't just a one-time study? data, how will we ensure that the data will be collected regularly? So, Councilman Adel Hashkali, uh, let me just say, when I came to Street Services, one of the things that was missing, and it still is missing, is a planning component of what we do. We're good at doing work, yeah. but really building a plan ahead to know what, how to do it, how frequently, when and where, we did not have the tools. We still are struggling. We don't have the tools. So, in your budget, package that we submitted to the mayor, it's going to be before you, your, the, the budget committee and council, is resources to do that. So what you're going to end up with, we're going to develop, is corridors in the city based on the canopy analysis and based on the pollution, based on, you know, water issues, based on where the sensitive community members are, schools and, and, and uh, senior citizens. What are these corridors that we have to plant trees to increase the canopy and provide shade and address the issues that we have? We're going to develop those and gradually populate that. And then we're going to have a schedule for each tree. So it's not going to be a one time. What you're going to end up with is a schedule for each tree. We're going to have an inventory. We're going to have a management plan for it like we do for sewers. We do for storm drains. We have a schedule and schedule varies. Right now we are just reacting. Right? And, and that to me is we need to get from that reaction to a structured plan that everybody can look at it and see what is the plan for it. The same thing we want to do for streets, same thing we want to do for sidewalks. We've been just reacting and reacting and we just can't keep up and I think we need to have a structured plan. So I'm pushing hard uh, through the budget process on three issues in my largest ask in the budget. One is the uh, safety and reducing risk liability, etc. One is renew our failed streets, but the third one that's most important one is getting the planning tools and the structure and the technology in to help us better manage and, and allow the community to see what we're doing for them and have that information for you, for your staff, for the constituents to do that. So I'm excited that next year hopefully we'll get some funding to develop this plan that's based on the inventory based on analysis on where the climate issues are, where pollution is, where things we need to do, and have corridors and focus, and you can see a huge impact on it. So I'm, it's not going to be a one-time thing. It's going to be transformational. And, sure. and I think it's going to really help us all better manage this. And, uh, and we're, we're doing a great job with what we have, but we need to really get 21st century uh, technology and tools into this effort. Thank you, Adele. Uh, and I appreciate the response, and some of the frustrations we have around here are constant studies, ongoing planning. I mean, uh, 
my residents want to see trees planted in their neighborhoods. So I appreciate the leadership and the commitment. And it is a budget issue because I've heard consistently as we talk about needing to prioritize money for trees. But until we're able to appropriately prioritize trees in our city's budget, what, what do you think is our other grant opportunities aside from the CAL FIRE grant that are available to us? I don't have a list of additional opportunities right here, but I can um, report back some information on that. That would be helpful. And lastly, Mr. Chair, if I can, I just want to recognize the Neighborhood Council Sustainability Alliance um, Committee Chair, Joanne D'Antonio, who's been working alongside uh, Dennis and Laura in my office, and recognize her leadership as well as the entire committee for advocating um, for improving our canopy in our city. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other? Sure. Can you talk a little bit about um, how we can ensure that this, the, 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 um, the requirements of your plan do not um, delay or hold up any overdue sidewalk repairs? Um, I think we can recognize the importance of trees, but we can also recognize the importance of safe, of safe sidewalks, um, especially in areas that haven't seen any sidewalk repairs in 30-something years. So can you talk a little bit about that, how that's going to work? It's already working, um, and it's working um, with a very, very good collaboration. You know, when we started funding BSS to have some concrete crews to implement the city's sidewalk repair program, we funded tree positions that are focused on supporting those crews. So in Tim Tyson's group is a specialty unit that is every single day doing inspections of the tree-related issues for the sidewalk repair projects that BOE uh, programs for us to do. And we, there's no delays whatsoever in processing those tree uh, so issues that need to be I'm handled. I'm gonna disagree with you. Um, over the last two and a half years, um, out of my own office budget, I've allocated over $700,000 for sidewalk repairs in my neighborhoods. And so we've had one hold up after the other in terms of some of these um, trees are causing our sidewalks to be uplifted. And so it's not allowing the contractor to move um, um, forward with the sidewalk repair. So something is not working. I don't know if it's just in my district where we're having those kinds of issues, but Adele, I'm happy to hear what, what some of the sol possible solutions can be. I'm not debating the importance of trees and I'm certainly not debating the importance of replacing them. I absolutely agree with my colleagues, but in situations where the tree happens to be the issue and, and, and moms who are trying to get to school every morning with their kids can't simply walk on our sidewalk because it's so uplifted, it's dangerous, or for our neighbors who happen to be handicapped, it's an issue. I, I agree with you 100%. This is one of my biggest issues I've raised in discussions with the mayor's office and many, many of you, and I've talked to about Right now, the only sidewalk repair is being done is done through the access mm -hmm. system, and we can't keep up. Since 20, uh, December 2016, we've received 18,000 requests for sidewalk that are uplifted or dangerous, right? We paid a lot of money uh, on claims every year and settling, and, but it's unsafe, and I 100% agree. What we have gonna move into, hopefully, and it's part of a budget package I have, is the access, repairs done through the Willits settlement will go on its own, will work with it. We're trying to come up with solutions so trees and sidewalk repairs can exist. We're expediting that as, as Greg mentioned. What I want to change is, is when we have a sidewalk that's unsafe, we need to make it safe. And it cannot be getting, it's not ADA compliance, it's not, it's just getting it safe. So right now we're working through a plan to have four crews across the city, in each region in the city, to respond and address issues like uplifted sidewalks. And there's solutions we can do quickly without having to reconstruct the entire sidewalk cheaply and quickly to make it safe. And we are doing three to four uh, samples that we're doing, similar to what we've done with the Cherokee example. I just did that example and, uh, one day just to show that there's solutions to be done and we cannot wait for a long time to make it safe and accessible. We can do stuff quickly and not have to rebuild a sidewalk from scratch, but to make it safe. So it's a stopgap for me, and I think we can do it. And we have a few examples that we've shown that we can do it. In the budget process, um, we want to come up with these four teams to really make these things safe 
or do something because it's not acceptable. I want to look into this discussion that you had about the 700,000. I wasn't aware of it. I'll oh, find no, out more the, where we I, are I, with I it. I will show you the receipts. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I want to so figure out where we the, are the, with the it. The point that I'm trying to make is Willits is a site. I'm not even speaking about that. Yeah, that put is that a, on the there, side. That's a different settlement. I understand what sidewalks are going to be covered through that settlement. Um, I'm talking about uh, an, a budget allocation that I've, I've made and a commitment that I've made to my neighborhood um, to my neighborhoods to try to get their sidewalks repaired, which we're paying for. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out a way to expedite this so that we're not holding up neighborhoods so, um, and having them deal with unsafe sidewalks any longer. I think That's we're on, this, we're on the do. same page, I believe, strongly that we, can, we have solutions that we have not done before, and we have a few examples that we're doing right now that we can go in quickly, and that should be a standard thing we can do. We can't afford our sidewalks not to be taken care of. Uh, it should be across the board, and I appreciate and that you're providing funding. Tree canopy at, at, at uh, and increase our tree canopy. And there's a balance between the two, but I think there's things we can do right now where we can actually an uplift it. I've seen it as I'm walking now. It's funny. I talk sidewalks, trees, and everything as I'm walking. I look at it and say, why we can't do this? This should be an easy thing to do. And I'm challenging the staff. I'm challenging everyone to find a solution. And there's things we can do. And, uh, and I'm excited that we're going to have a discussion at council. But in the meantime, I want to go back and find out the status on some of the things that we did. I want to work with you okay. uh, on, on these solutions. I want to show each one of you that there's things we can do to keep the tree at the same time make the sidewalk safe. And, and it should not be a major construction that takes years. It should be a day or half a day that you can make it safe and move on and make it better for the community. Okay, thank you very much. That's all, Mr. Chair. Great. No, thank you. I think we all we all share that goal and, and want to move us in that direction. So, uh, colleagues, unless there's any other questions on this item, uh, before we move to the next item, there's, there's sort of one actionable point on this. Most of this was informational, but uh, I'd like us to authorize the Bureau of Street Services to proceed in the next round of consideration to for a CAL FIRE Urban Community and Forestry Proposition 68 grant from the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection to fund a street tree inventory and, if awarded, instruct uh, Bureau of Street Services to report back to the Public Works Committee to receive authorization to accept that grant. That just, that just helps us uh, move to that next step. Um, without objection, it is so ordered. And we will move, um, well, before we move on to that item, in the interim there was a name added to the uh, public comment, but I don't see him here. I'll call his name. Wayne from Encino are here on this item. Let the record reflect, he was called and did not show up. So that takes us to item number two. Mr. Espinosa, if you would read, uh, this has to do with the controller's audit, if you would read that into the record. Item number two is a report from the controller relative to the city's tree trimming and maintenance program. Okay, and we have one public comment speaker on this. Let's stay right there. Uh, Mr. Spindler, he let the record reflect. His name has been called and he is not here. So that brings us uh, uh, to the director of auditing uh, controller's report, uh, Mr. Wigginroth. Thank Please. you, Mr. Chair, members of the, of the committee. My name is Bob Wigginroth, and I am the Director of Auditing for the Controller's Office. Not with me today are the two auditors that um, conducted the, the report together, put together the report that's before you. They're at a conference learning uh, some information that's going to help them on their next project. I'm going to briefly talk about the recommendations in our report. and and. First, I want to tip my hat to the men and women of the Bureau of Street Services and in particular to the um, Urban Forestry Division. They have a very difficult and dangerous job that requires talent, knowledge, and artistry. And the recommendations in this report are designed to support them just as you, just as you do and their goal uh, to, do, to keep up the good work and help the city better care for the hundreds of thousands of trees that, that line our streets and sidewalks. And, and medians. So our recommendations fall in two major categories and we've talked a lot about already today the first one and that is to conduct a citywide inventory of street trees and that was last done in the in the late 90s so uh, a couple decades ago and the components of that recommendation is and we've talked about it the general managers talked about it is to develop a plan to do that and to answer questions on what information should we include in that, in that uh, inventory, what technology platform should we use. Secondly, it's how we do it, looking at 
uh, different technologies to conduct that. Uh, we might look at, at volunteers to help us do it. And then also coordinating with other departments such as uh, Department of Public of uh, Water and Power and as we've been talking about, Recreation and Parks. Uh, next, when we conduct the inventory, it's going to be very important to compare it to the prior inventory and try to learn from it. And then finally, something you've already talked about, once this inventory is completed, it's going to be very important to identify a process to keep it up to date with the day-to-day -day work that we do to be able to keep that inventory up to date. The second major component of our recommendations is also something you've talked about. It's the project management system. It's developing a centralized system to manage the daily work and then provide us information on the long-term health and safety of our trees. And we're, we think it's important that the system integrates the work orders as well as into the inventory management that I talked about. So this day-to-day -day system should continuously update the inventory. And then finally, the system should have strong reporting capabilities. So we can, can know that the impact of our day-to-day -day work, but also help us monitor and make decisions on the most efficient way to approach taking care of our trees and help us to, to look at, at this, this overwhelming number that we have, that we've talked about, it could help guide us to the best way to really take a bite out of the, out of the inventory and catch up. And with that, I stand ready to, uh, to answer questions. And uh, if there are some questions that, that I can't answer, I'll get the information right back to you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Great. Appreciate your work. Appreciate the controller and, and the office and all that you guys have done. Uh, the audit describes the difference between the um, maintenance responsibility of DWP and the BS Bureau of Street Services and talks about potentially leveraging both. And I was curious to know a little bit more about how that would work um, so that we're not being duplicative as, as a city. Uh, so that we can do all of our tree trimming, but um, if you could just give a little more detail on how you envision that. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. So I'll just give a few, a few examples. It, it, let's just say in terms of uh, doing the inventory, in many cases we have a lot of, of people that work for the city of Los Angeles on the streets working on trees, and so coordination might be able to help us um, uh, take advantage of, of just being able not just focus on uh, one area, but we have more people on the ground. Secondly, there are probably some techniques that we can both learn from one another. So I just think a dialogue and a, uh, a, a good relationship uh, is going to help, I think, everything work better together. I think the same holds true for uh, recreation and parks. You know, I think we're talking about the management system possibly being the same type of system used in recreation and parks. I think that collaboration of those of the three groups that have the primary responsibility for the city trees is, would just be beneficial. Right. Collaboration clearly makes a lot of sense. DWP, obviously, when they go in, they don't actually trim the tree other than and the wire. I could see how we would benefit them if we if we take extra consideration to make sure what we do the trees that we're avoiding the wires I don't know how we get them to go that extra mile when they're doing the the wire to actually do the full tree or some maybe we pay them a little I, I don't know what what the besides the generic idea of collaboration which is great mm -hmm. I'm trying to get my head around how that could happen because that is potentially a lot of money they spend almost as much as we do on trees um, but they just do a little piece of it I, I agree. I agree. All right. Um, so I'm curious how that could work. But another thing that caught my eye was the um, the lidar stuff. Maybe because years ago I worked when I was in a congressional office with the lidar uh, ITT radars that the military was using, and it was very cutting edge back then. And, and um, LA County, I guess, is exploring the possibility of a pilot study for a lidar equipped flight to collect tree information. And if you could explain. Um, is this the kind of technology, you know, should we partner with them, uh, with the county on some sort of a pilot? Is this technology the kinds of things that you guys looked into? It's, it's a very intriguing idea. Um, Mr. Chair, we have, we have had discussions and learned about this technology. 
And uh, I believe, so I, I, I think the county is very serious about it. And I think it has some tremendous potential to be able to collect a lot of data um, with, the, with the flyover technology. And I think we were talking uh, earlier that the focus of our audit is on the street trees but this technology would take in the entire urban forest and give you granular data. So I think in answer to your question, and I couldn't answer if it's, if it's worth the investment, but I do believe it's worth the discussion to, uh, to look into it in greater detail to see if it's feasible for us and would warrant an investment on a pilot. Okay, I have a couple questions for BSS, but I wanna open it up for the controller questions uh, while, while you're at the, at the mic to my colleague. Mr. O'Farrell, I know you. Oh, you're at BSS. Anyone else have a specific question for the control? Mr. Rue. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, uh, Chairman. Um, you know, you, there were three options presented in your report to conduct a street tree inventory. Um, and I want to preface this question with a couple of points. That first, given that the diseases and pest issues that our urban forest is dealing with, I think it's incredibly important that when we do take inventory, that it be conducted by professionals, including a team of biologists. And secondly, I have, um, I'm a big Adele fan um, with, with the new uh, um, revamping of the department and, and, and the renewed interest in trees. And I have complete faith in them. But if uh, BSS, um, if the street services is selected to do it, they should be accompanied by consultants, namely professional biologists, which we currently don't have on staff. So do you, and actually this could be a BSS question, um, do you, controller, have a preference or recommendations on who should conduct such an inventory? Mr. Chair, Council Member Root, we do not have a preference. In fact, I, th I think we believe that perhaps the final, um, the final model will be a little bit of everything. And, uh, but I will tell you that I, I do uh, respect and understand the points that you're making about the need for professional uh, uh, knowledge to do a good job on the inventory. Um, so I, could, I, I guess I could ask that to BSS as well um, later on. But the report also indicates that data from the 1996 inventory identified 120,000 vacant trees, uh, planting sites, or vacant wells. Um, this number has probably increased significantly since then. But so, and as part of this new inventory, I would hope that we get a, a more firmer handle of the number of vacant tree wells as well as um, have BSS come back with recommendations on how to do more equitably uh, distribute the two to one replacement policy. Uh, I know we have the in-lieu fee, um, but our canopy issues are, are, are citywide. And if we're gonna continue replanting uh, where we have a concentration of trees, we're not gonna be able to make a dent in this problem, especially for residents in Council District 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and they're continually gonna be missing out. So. Um, once we have a handle on exactly where those tree wells are, um, I, I think the, whether it's the controller uh, additional recommendation or BSS, if we could have a few recommendations on how to change the, and re, change the replanting uh, nexus requirement. So, and that's more of an equity issue as well. Great. So I just had a question. Great. Additional questions for the control. Ms. Martinez. Quick question. So as I was reading in the, in the controller's report, he recommends a hybrid approach to tree trimming. On, in other words, he talks about a pool of pre-qualified contractors to be able to be more proactive um, and have an on-demand approach to tree trimming. But as I recall, colleagues, last year, um, the council had approved to eliminate the use of tree trimming contractors and instead be able to hire in-house crew like we did once upon a time when we used to be fully staffed with in-house um, tree trimmers and the equipment to do so. So how would this work using the controller's approach? Um, thank you, Mr. Chair and Council Member Martinez. The, the discussion of contractors in our audit report is in the event that there is a need for contract service over and above city forces. So our, it is not our, uh, our position on a report that that we should have contractors, but in the event there, there were, so for instance, let's just say there was a, uh, a massive windstorm and our city forces were overwhelmed, that we should consider having like a, a group of qualified arbor uh, contractors at the ready that we could draw on. And if we did that work ahead of time, 
then we'd be prepared to do that. And we could kind of go through their qualifications and get idea how much that charges for different services so that in the event we needed them, we could make a good decision. Next. Okay, great, thank you. Um, I'm gonna bring up uh, Bureau Street Services, but obviously stand by, we may, we may pull you back uh, as well. Let's start with, the, with Greg. The, um, the Bureau's response to the audit indicates that it concurs with a lot of the recommendations. Um, but as you move forward uh, with the implementation of the components in the DUDAC report, is the Bureau incorporating the controller's findings where appropriate? And is, is there any particular difference that we should know about? Uh, in the report on the item we were just discussing, um, we included a little table of the various key recommendations and we feel that um, the DUDEC report, the controller's report, and our own 2015 State of the Street Trees report are all largely aligned around the core uh, direction towards the strategic management of the urban forest. So we think all of it really works together and we have a very good path forward. Okay, and then and building on the question Ms. Martinez asked for the controller, the same, same idea for you, which is, you know, Bureau Street Services is gonna develop the contract, the, the pilot study. Um, we obviously, as a council, we're very focused on actually hiring folks with target local hire and, and all the rest. So help us understand um, how this, this would work, and I guess it's specifically related to the multi-tiered pricing structure, the service-specific multi-tiered pricing structure. Is that, is that the sort of niche that we're, we're targeting for the contract work? Well, currently the only contracted proactive work is to trim trees around the street lighting. There's a separate amount of money, a little bit less than a million dollars, that comes out of the street lighting assessment fund every year, and we're contracting out that proactive uh, tree trimming work. But the discussion in the controller's report is a rather narrow technical discussion around the contract structure if one were to uh, have additional contracts in the future, and it proposes some different ideas that some smaller cities are using. Colleagues, any additional questions? For Bureau Street? Thank you, Mr. Bureau Chair. Uh, thank you so much. Um, so in looking at the controller's report and the and audit, and then looking at the response, um, I see this, the controller's report as um, commenting on something that BSS already knows, is already doing, and already plans to do largely, for the most part. That's how I see it. So. I'm, in all honesty, I'm not so sure how necessary this report was. However, I think it can be helpful um, uh, to get everyone aligned and, you know, re-energized to move forward with a greater sense of urgency. Um, I, I just want to say a couple of things. I don't think anyone heard a single thing I just said. Um, one of the things I want to talk about is in relation to going back to contractors. Um, my association with the city in a, in a council office and as council member goes back to 2002, I remember what it was like when the city used contractors to trim trees and it did not go well in the neighborhoods and was not received well. So um, I am 100% in support of we, the city, bringing aboard professional arborists and tree trimmers and all the adequate equipment so that we can preserve uh, our trees and maintain them adequately so that they last longer and provide shade, et cetera. So I just wanted to put that out there. And I do understand uh, Mr. Controller's response, and I, I think that's a good one in terms of uh, contracting out for things like when there's a windstorm event or if, perhaps when there are dead trees just to remove them, et cetera. That, that would make sense. But in terms of the care and maintenance of the tree itself, um, I would strongly uh, support um, hiring city services. And in terms of the, um, the assessment for the inventory, it's, it, it, and to Mr. Roos's point, it's kind of a, a, an issue, and I, I look forward to hearing from you as well, arborist versus biologist, because what's your opinion? Is, will, it, will a trained arborist have, uh, be equipped with enough knowledge to, be deter to determine the health of the tree and what might be afflicting a tree? So. Yes, um, a trained arborist is specifically trained on how to identify different types of tree disease. 
where we, we where we need biologists is figuring out on a macro level what to do about the disease. We don't need a biologist to visit each individual tree, but right now we're having trouble identifying from other cities proactive efforts you can do to prevent the spread of disease by the shot hole borer. So whether it's a city staff arborist or a contracted arborist, they can tell that this tree is infected by a shot hole borer, but we need a few biologists on staff to develop mitigation plans for that population of trees. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And um, lastly, this is not included in the reporting where, but we work closely with city plants. Um, what is your sense that city plants is being adequately funded, that the relationship is good, that um, this will be an agency that will live on with adequate funding because they've resulted in a net gain of tree plantings across the 13th district since I've been in office easily in the thousands. So it's another great resource for planting trees and adding to the tree canopy inventory. I think the relationship between Streets LA and city plants has never been stronger than it is today. And in fact, evidence of that is that city plants was the funder of the DUDEC report. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we're looking at with city plants is having them be a user of our new tree inventory so that the inventory locates planting sites and they can be assigned to city plants and then to city plants not-for-profit partners who can have some limited user rights in the inventory to um, uh, use a mobile device in the field to let us know when they've planted. So we're working to integrate all that through the work management system that we hope to purchase. And, and colleagues, it's up to all of us to look at the f adequate funding for city plants to live on. Uh, it's my understanding, yeah, right? And so, uh, and, then, and then lastly, colleagues, just something that uh, I think now is more important than ever. Uh, this, isn't, this is closely tied to trees, of course, and that is uh, the heat island effect uh, and the cool pavement pilot prog programs with Bureau Street Services. Give you an example. The street that I live on in Glassell Park is asphalt. And in the July heat event, it was 116 degrees, 116. Never been the temperature that high. Uh, and so uh, I think we have to incorporate those types of pilot projects or stop calling them a pilot project and just get them funded and, and do mapping of where our hottest heat islands are. And they're gonna be in the valley, but we need to it, it can't be just the tree canopy to uh, combat the heat island effect and, and climate change. It's gonna have to be the way we resurface streets and sidewalks on a, on a fairly grand scale. So I just wanted to put that out there. I enthusiastically agree, and as the Chief Sustainability Officer of our Bureau, I'm the lead or the executive sponsor of our Cool Pavement effort. And I'd love to come back to the committee and maybe provide an oral report on our progress on urban cooling sometime very soon. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about the, uh, the cool pavement stuff and, and was thrilled when we got that pilot going in, in all the districts and look forward to that report. So thank you. So colleagues, I have a couple of recommendations here. Um, for this, this item, you know, first is to instruct the Bureau of Street Services to report with a detailed implementation plan for the completion of the street tree inventory, including one, an analysis of the feasibility of utilizing technology-based strategies identified in the controller's February 2019 report to ensure efficiency and accuracy in the data collection. Two, a discussion of the Bureau's efforts to collaborate and coordinate with the Department of Rec and Parks, Department of Water and Power, Los Angeles County, and the private sector to determine how best to complete the street tree inventory. And three, a plan to coordinate and partner with the Department of Water and Power to compile and share street inventory and maintenance data. The second recommendation is to instruct the Bureau of Street Services to report on the development and implementation of a centralized system to manage the street tree inventory and manage and inform maintenance operations. The report should include an analysis of the forestry management uti system utilized by Rec and Parks and evaluate whether the system can be customized to, at a minimum, integrate work order and inventory management functions, including reports made through the my 3 la one system and provide a more dynamic inventory and maintenance report capabilities. Um, my colleague, Mr. Root, has made a, a suggestion which I think is a good one which since it's directly related to this report that we also incorporate some of the moving clauses in, in a um, motion that this committee has already approved, but to keep it all together since it is, is directly related. And those 
these are, and I, I'll, I'll mention them quickly, and I will, I will share them with you so you have them directly, but they're literally word for word from the, the motions that we have approved in this committee, which is to further recommend that Bureau of Street Services, well, we just talked about that comprehensive street inventory. Second, that the Bureau of Street Services be instructed uh, and the Community Forestry Advisory Committee be uh, requested to review street maintenance and trimming practices among city departments that perform tree trimming. Third, and I'll give you the, the full text here, the Bureau of Street Services be instructed to report back with an analysis and recommendation to improve the city's two-to-one street replacement policy, including but not limited to consideration the holistic value of a tree slated for removal based on the tree's health, maturity, canopy size, and evaluation of the existing tree planting in lieu uh, fee to ensure the city achieves full cost recovery. Uh, and uh, fourth, that the Bureau of Street Services be instructed to report to the council with alternative sidewalk design options that adhere to the ADA requirements. Um, and then finally, Bureau of Street Services, uh, CAO, reported council with cost estimates required in budgets of the hiring of a director of community forest and forestry and additional staff consistent with the aforementioned expertise. So those are all basically right in the, in the wheelhouse of, what, of this report and just to pick up those recommendations that we've, we've already approved as a committee and to include them in with, this, with these recommendations. So without any objection, uh, that is so ordered and we'll move to uh, item number three. Thank you. Um, and then four and five, we're done on consent, so this is our last item. Mr. Espinosa, would you please read item three into the record? Item number three is a report from the Bureau of Street Services relative to the operations of the Streets LA Tree Nursery. And I don't, Mr. Spindler has signed up for all of them, but he's not, well, I'll just call. Is Mr. Spindler here? Let the record reflect he's not here. Okay. Uh, are there any other general public, co any other comment speakers here? I seeing none, we'll move to the item. Thank you, uh, Craig Spots again, uh, Assistant Director of the Bureau of Street Services. Uh, I'm actually pleased to tell you that I visited the nursery last week with our Chief Forester, Tim Tyson, so I can um, speak to you about it uh, from my own eyes. Uh, the nursery's in very good condition. There's about 650 trees there, mostly 24-inch box, but some larger. They're clustered up in about six or seven different groups by species. Um, they're watered twice a week. There's full-time staff there caring for these trees. Um, and the number of trees there and how long they've been there uh, keeps being reduced as we have alternate means to get trees planted in this city. Um, the, um, I noticed when I was there, there was a brand new, uh, there was a truck full of tomorrow's trees that are being planted, so they load them the day before, and there was eight beautiful trees on this truck in great condition, uh, ready to be planted as part of one of the streetscape improvement projects. So the sort of, um, if there was a time when the nursery was overloaded or undercared for, that time has really passed. There's a reasonable number of recently received trees that are in good condition in the nursery, and um, as more uh, of the, when there is a no place for a second replacement tree on site, more and more of the users are choosing to pay into the fund rather than deliver a tree. So over time, this facility will more be a place where we keep trees we're about to plant for grant funded streetscape improvement projects and for our own corridor tree planting projects and less of a place where sort of trees arrive from all different types of sources. Great. Less of a place where trees go to die sometimes. This it didn't look like that at all when I was there. It was the most pleasant city facility I've ever visited. It was full of greenery. Which is great. So it's, it's, it's changed around, which is a wonderful thing. It um, has. And, and is that, and I think you alluded to this, but the, the in lieu fee, although I hate that name because I don't think it really reflects what we're, what we're doing with the trees, but um, uh, that's having the impact on there is that that's causing us to have less less of those sort of extra trees and more being able to buy the trees at the time that we need them is that having a big impact correct since the advent of that fee the number of one onesies and twosies coming in the nursery is down by about 50 percent so we have a much more manageable uh, population of trees to to take good care of um, and also the positions that you helped us obtain some of those planting and watering positions are the people that are now available to service these s trees. So more people means more people to make sure the trees are well taken care of. That's great. So the staffing is adequate, what you need, and um, 
What about the, the length of time the trees are, or plants are stored at the facility? What, what is it and, and has it changed? I don't have an average length of time, um, but the way to tell is if a tree's been there too long, it starts to outgrow the container, and I only saw three or four in that condition. So I think that the, uh, not only the number that we have there is shrinking over time, but I think how long they've been there uh, is definitely uh, further and further reduced. Do we track the, uh, the mortality rate of the trees there? I'm not sure we have those statistics, but it is, um, it's not a large dollar value of material. It's less than $100,000 worth of tree stock there. And, and what I saw was in very good condition. And uh, I directed um, Tim Tyson that as these planting crews come on, let's get planted the larger and older ones that still are in there so that we'll shrink it down to the freshest and newest that's, that's in the inventory. And I think that'll take place before the end of the fiscal. Any questions? I'm happy to take anybody to visit anytime they want to check it out. Great. Well, let me take you up on that or do a, do a field trip or something. Yeah. Oh, good idea. Right. The facilities aren't quite like this. <laughs> Can we have a tree summit there? Possibly, we'll yeah. A tree summit. <laughs> All right. Well, um, without any, any comments or questions, we'll, we will note and file this report. It's an informational only. Uh, Mr. Espinosa, is there anything left on the docket? No, the desk is clear. Okay, without objection then, this meeting's adjourned. Thank you.